So the poster uh, discusses a particular project I've been working on for target enrichment. In many cases, researchers are looking to uh, sequence or resequence uh, specific parts of the genome because sequencing the whole genome is still prohibitively expensive. And so uh, we've generated a, a new technology that allows us to target specific regions of the genome for resequencing. So I think uh, the most notable aspect of this project is that we're actually taking a, a unique approach to this, uh, solving this target enrichment problem. It's not something that uh, is present in the market right now, and I uh, feel it offers a number of advantages to the users, um, such as uh, reduced hands-on time, very effective uh, high on target rates, and uh, low sample input requirements. Just because this is a, a, a new way of approaching the problem, uh, that's what sort of drew me to this project. So normally in a target enrichment approach, um, people will either, uh, for small regions of the genome, will utilize uh, PCR, um, which is a, a very effective method, but is only useful for very small regions of the genome. Um, the other main method people use is uh, a hybridization and pullout method. So essentially a probe is hybridized to your genomic DNA region of interest, and uh, that DNA is physically uh, pulled out um, from the rest of the, the genome. Um, in our case, what we've done is uh, we take a single primer approach, um, and it's, it's sort of a hybrid of the two methods. So we have a single primer that hybridizes to the genome, um, but then we extend that primer uh, throughout the, the piece of the genomic DNA. Um, and this has actually uh, uh, allowed us a, a tremendous uh, specificity and has really cut down on both the uh, input requirements of the DNA um, as well as the hands-on time uh, to complete the assay. So we can go ahead and uh, describe the target enrichment process here. So you can see from the beginning, uh, we're really focused on uh, providing information about how this protocol works. So in the, the first figure, we just have a quick schematic of, of the protocol itself. What's key here is that you can see the total of the steps starting at genomic DNA and ending at targeted uh, enrichment library um, only takes seven and a half hours. Below that, uh, you can see a little more of a diagram of what's happening um, at the molecular level. So if you start with the genomic DNA, um, we can shear that DNA to about 500 base pair average. Um, we ligate on uh, specific adapters and then hybridize on our uh, capture probes, extend that hybridization, which then creates a probe that has two uh, synthetic priming sites available. You can PCR, amplify that library, and then the, that library is ready to sequence. One of the biggest challenges is the design of the targeting probes. So we need to have probes that will hybridize to the regions of the, regions of the genome that we're interested in with enough specificity that we're not getting a lot of uh, off-target reads in a way that we can easily replicate it across uh, other regions of the genome. Next, we have some data. These are uh, IGV tracks just to show the coverage that we're obtaining from these samples. So you can see at either 10 nanogram or 100 nanogram input, we're getting good coverage over the exonic regions, which are our targets. Whereas in the uh, intronic regions or the intergenic regions, we get very few reads. If we look at the, the table of how the, the reads actually look, um, you can see again with as little as 10 nanograms of input, um, we're getting 90 plus percent of the reads are mapping with about 85 percent of the bases on target. And if you compare a 10 nanogram input to 100 nanogram input, um, looking at coverage of each particular region, you can see that actually the, the experiment is extremely reproducible um, even between those two types of input. The line drawn here is a slope of one. Each point uh, represents a targeted region. So we've created a target enrichment product that from genomic DNA to sequenceable library only takes seven and a half hours. Those libraries produce a high rate of uh, on-target reads, 85% in these cases, while only requiring 10 to 100 nanograms of genomic DNA input. Uh, we get even coverage across the targeted regions of interest. And you can see that uh, the, these data are very reproducible um, regardless of how much DNA input is present. Uh, so one of the big things I think this uh, will enable uh, researchers to do um, will be to just take uh, 
samples, genomic DNA samples, um, from different types of, of tissues that weren't possible to use before. So uh, small samples such as tumor aspirates, um, where you're not collecting a lot of uh, genomic DNA. Um, in the past, it would have been very difficult uh, to perform a target enrichment type experiment um, on the, such a small sample. Um, but because our, our sample inputs uh, requirements are so low, um, I think that that's actually a, a very key place um, where we're going to make a, a large impact in the research field.